Hi, I'm Tom from Tom Got Photography and today we reaching the end of this series dedicated to watermarks. We're going to talk about Lightroom, Photoshop, One Action and a new thing, a droplet. Stay tuned. You remember about three months ago, back in October, we started this series about watermarks. We first saw how easy it is using Photoshop to change the background of an image to change it into a transparent one. This is very useful when you want to use an image with a transparent background and use it as a watermark, but you can use a transparent image for a lot of things. We then on went to creating a watermark inside Lightroom in the export module. And we went as far as creating a very customized watermark based on our very own signature. Then the next episode was about discovering what an action is inside Photoshop. And while it's not necessarily linked to a watermark per se, I really need you guys to understand what an action is so we can actually do this very episode of today. Well, what I'm going to show you today is my method to create a new type of watermark. I had been using the same method for a very, very long time, which relied on a PNG file. Let me show you what I had. It's basically this file, which I had created inside uh, Photoshop. It's basically a text uh, showing my website address, tommigotphotography.com, underlined with a red line and my logo. And all this as a rectangle uh, image, and it's a PNG file, so it's transparent and it fits pretty well when put on top of an image in using um, Lightroom in the export module. However, the problem that I always had using this way was that although you have this feature inside Lightroom to make your watermark um, proportionally sized to the image that you're going to put it onto. Uh, so basically meaning that if you have a landscape oriented image, your watermark will be quite big, but then if you end up having a vertical image, a portrait oriented image, then your watermark is going to be uh, smaller because the width of your image is um, not as long. Well, the problem that I had with this is especially when you use your image on a blog, where you're going to have a succession of images, some is going to be vertically oriented, others going to be horizontally oriented. And so this change from one image to another makes you see this watermark that it's not going to be the same size. And sometimes it just feels that going from a vertical shot where the watermark is rather small to a, a um, an horizontally oriented image where the watermark is slightly bigger. It just visually, I never, it never really appealed me. And then about six months ago, I made a change. I've decided to go for an alternative. And this is exactly what I'm going to present today. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is one of the articles on my blog. As you can see, this is a regular um, orientally oriented image and I'm using the very same PNG file as the uh, watermark here. But when it, come to, when it comes to a vertically oriented image, look what I've done. So basically that image, so normally it's a um, two-third uh, ratio image, right? And what I've actually decided to do is make it a square. And now I end up having this white band here on the right side on which I built this watermark based on my logo and the same text that I had before. And I found this quite interesting because when you use it on a blog, you end up having the same width as the landscape image. And so the logo or the watermark is no bigger and it looks actually quite nice. So this is exactly what I'm going to show you how I actually create this. So to do this, we're going to start inside Lightroom. So let's go to Lightroom and we're going to use this image today. Why? Because it's a two third ratio image. It's a vertical shot. And although you could do it with a four by five, um, and I've created a watermark especially for that and I'll show you afterwards, but um, the majority of us use a, a two third uh, ratio image. So that's why we're going to use this for the tutorial. So the first thing that we want to do is actually export this image. So let me show you. In the export panel, what do I have? Well, I do have some presets of mine and you can see, we can see here the site V standing for vertical for the blog and site H for horizontal for the blog. And what we have in here is basically 
specifying the destination. So it's going to be my folder that I created for today and it's called watermark image. And then when it comes to the name, um, well, there's a little trick here. I'm actually using the title that you find inside the metadata panel. Uh, this is something that I use all the time, uh, especially when I publish on the web. And as a matter of fact, I'll do a short video, like tip of the day video, um, showing you how I, I do this. Because there's a little trick, a little feature inside Lightroom that is quite useful and you may have missed it. And the next setting is about the file setting and the format. So obviously it's going to be a JPEG. The quality 100 is fine by me. Then the color space. The color space has to be sRGB. Why? Because this is the color space for the web. So while you could export it as a pro photo or Adobe RGB, uh, it would still work. You would still see your image. However, chances are that the tone, the tint, the colors are going to be changed slightly and sometimes quite dramatically. So I encourage you, if you're publishing for the web, go for sRGB. Then in terms of the size, because I publish on the blog and I'm quite conscious of nowadays resolutions, whether you deal on the computer screen or tablet or um, a mobile phone, we have a lot of high definition screens. And so that's why I'm using a 2000, 2000 pixels. And here's the long edge. And because we're dealing with a vertical shot, it means that it's the height that's going to be 2000 pixels. Then the resolution, 96 uh, pixel per inch, that's fair enough for uh, the screen. And then when it comes to sharpening, because it's meant to be seen only on screens, then I just put it screen and standard. Watermarking, I disable the watermarking here. You do not want to um, activate it. And then we just do export. Now we're going to go to Photoshop and let's bring up my um, browser and let me show it. It's actually over here that way so here is the browser and uh, in fact I could just close uh, that's exactly the same as this one here is the image so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to move it into Photoshop just like so the first thing we want to do in Photoshop is to make this image bigger uh, by bigger, I mean changing it into a square. So uh, we're going to do this inside an action. So if you don't know anything about the action, it probably means that you haven't seen the episode that I had published before. So in that case, I invite you to click on the link popping up right now on the right, because otherwise you may struggle understanding what we're going to do. So what I'm going to create, first of all, is a um, new uh, set. So I basically create a set, which is basically a folder inside the action panel. And I'm going to call this um, watermark tutorial, just like so. And in, now I'm going to create an action and I'm going to call it watermark, um, if I can spell it correctly, watermark V for vertical. Then I'm going to do two by three and then I'm going to do 1,333 by 2,000. And that's to do with the size of the image coming in. So hit record. You can see the red dot here saying, watch out, it's recording. So I said we're going to transform this image into a square. So to do this, we're going to go in the image menu and we're going to go to the canvas size, not the image size, the canvas size. And as you can see, we have a width of 1,333 pixels. Change this into a 2,000 uh, width. The heights will leave it at 2,000. And now we need to define where we want that extra um, space added. And I want it to be on the right side. So I'm going to click on the middle left arrow, this one, and all the arrows point to where this space is going to be created. Now I want the... Um, extra space to be uh, totally white. So I'm good with this and I hit OK. So here we go. We've got our white band right here. And the next step is to add our logo. So I'm not actually going to use my own logo. What I'm going to do is just um, import an image. To do this, we're going to do file and we're going to do place embedded. And when you do this, we go to this folder that I had created specifically for this tutorial and we're going to click on that file here. And here we go. It's a funny uh, logo, funny thumb, smiley face. Um, and so we just move it. What we're going to do now is resize it because it's a bit too big. So if you remember one early episode that I did about Photoshop to resize and to do it to the center, you just hold the shift 
and the Alt on the Mac or the Option key on the PC. And hold one corner, drag to the center of the image and resize it. I think this is a good size. Hit Enter. And now I'm just going to move it to uh, place it where I want. So here is a bit too low. So I'm just going to bring it like this. And I think that's pretty good. I could do something very neat, but I think that's enough for the tutorial. The next step now is because we want to save this image as a JPEG and the JPEG does not understand layers, we're going to uh, basically flatten our image. And to do this, we're going to do either the menu, the uh, layer, menu at the top or simply right click on any of the layers and we just do flatten image. Here we go and the next step is to save this image and we're basically going to overwrite the image that we um, added inside Photoshop. So what we do is file, save, quality we leave it to 12 and we hit OK. That is done. Now we're going to close this image and now that it's closed we can finally end our um, uh, action recording. So I'm just going to click the stop button. This is it. So let's see. Now I bring up the finder here, the, the browser, and we can see our image. Well, we need to test this action. So I'm going to delete it and I'm going back to Lightroom to export it again. So export it. I don't change anything and just hit export. Going back to Photoshop and the browser and I drag and drop. Now, all I need to do is to test that action, like I said, so I'm just going to click on the action and I'm just going to press the play button. Hope it all disappeared. Let's go to the browser and we can see it created properly our image. So the action is ready to go. It works. So let's delete that image because we don't need it. Now, the next step is about finding a way to trigger this action from inside Lightroom. And to do this, we're going to use what we call a droplet. A droplet, it's a mini program that is going to enable us to call if I was going to say a function, but not call an action inside Photoshop. The good thing is you can execute this uh, mini program, this droplet from either a third uh, party uh, program or simply on its own, where you can basically drag and drop files onto it. Well, to create a droplet, what we need to do is go to the File menu in Photoshop, go to Automate and do Create Droplet. Then here what we're going to do is choose where we want to save the droplet. So we basically click on this and I want to save the droplet inside that very folder that I created for this watermark. In terms of the name, well, I'm going to leave it uh, this way. It's fine by me. Um, and actually, I'm going to change this because that was the French version of it. So let me change it. I'm going to call it watermark and I'm going to move this here so it makes more sense tutorial and I'm going to remove that one thing to notice is that the extension of this droplet it's .app now I'm going to save this and then we need to point it to the right action so to do that we select the set and that's watermark tutorial that's correct in terms of the action, well, there's only one inside that set, so it finds it automatically. Then if you actually look at the other properties of that panel, well, we actually don't need to do anything at all. Because when it comes to the open comment, there was nothing. We just imported, embedded the image. Then subfolders, well, we, this action that we created did not create folders and subfolders, so we don't need to worry about this. Then um, the dialog box, you can notice that here, in for this action, there is no dialog box. Uh, that's the reason why there's no uh, boxes um, ticked right here. And then the last one about the color profile warning, we shouldn't be uh, worried about it because when we export it from, um, from Lightroom, we export it as sRGB, uh, and so that's absolutely fine. Stop on errors, fair enough. Uh, and destination, we don't set it because Lightroom will define where the uh, final image will be. So let's click OK. And now uh, when we go to the folder, we can actually see uh, this droplet created. So now it's time to go inside Lightroom and I'm going to show you something that you may have not seen before. And that's in the export panel. So click on export and go at the bottom. Here you have post processing. So there's a few options in a drop down list. If you click on this, you'll notice that we have do nothing. 
or showing final, which is practical. When you export your images, you can actually show the uh, folder in which you exported your images. Might be practical, if, especially if you do some actions afterwards with those images. You can actually trigger uh, Photoshop to open or any other applications. And as for those two here, these are actually droplets of mine that I use all the time. You notice that I have a two, a two third and a, two, and a four by five. Uh, so here, what we're going to do is go to export actions folder now. When we do this, here we go. You have this folder. Notice where this folder is. This folder sits under the Lightroom settings. Wherever you actually put the Lightroom settings on your machine, it doesn't matter. Uh, it cannot be on a network though, but wherever you put it, I decided to put it on my Drawboard Mini, but that's a detail. So here inside the export actions, this is where we want our droplets. So these are mine. And so let's bring up the other um, finder, the other browser here, I'll go there. And here it is. This is the one that we created, we see tutorial. So I'm going to drag and drop it into that folder. Now that I've done that, if I go back to Lightroom in a drop down list, I can now finally see it. Watermark tutorial, vertical, two by three and the size. So I click on this and what I need to do now is just hit the export and look what happened now. It creates the file, but pay attention. Suddenly it changes it. So what happened? Well, Lightroom basically took the picture from the library, exported it as a JPEG using the settings that we had. Then it basically called, triggered this action, this tutorial one this droplet. The droplet itself called Photoshop. It happened that Photoshop was already open. If Photoshop wasn't open, it would open Photoshop and then call the action that we have specified when we created the droplet. The action basically made the changes that we had um, recorded when making the action, which included saving the image where the changes. And here it is. So it's pretty good because what we did here was basically creating a watermark, but you could actually do whatever you want. Imagine all the actions, all, no pun intended, any treatment that you'd like to do inside Photoshop that you cannot do inside Lightroom. And maybe those treatments, it makes sense to do it afterwards. Well, you could actually create an action for those treatments and call these actions using a droplet. So it's a very, very powerful way of doing things. So, that, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually, as usual, creating a blog article with this video and I'm actually going to provide you inside that blog article, I'm going to provide you with the smiley, with as well the, app, uh, the action that I've created. And inside this blog article, I'm going to show you how to install this action and what you may need to change inside this action to make it work because we do not have the same machine, the paths are different. And so you just have to follow the instruction and it will work. Before we end this video, um, because it's the final uh, video of the series, maybe I need to bring some conclusion about watermarking for your images. You know, there's many ways of doing watermark and the reason why and it decided at first to create this series on watermarks it was because how many times have you seen um, people posting on social media and elsewhere pictures with weird watermark, like the, the most bonkers one, especially when using the copyright sign. And to me, I always found it very ludicrous because why do we apply a watermark to our images? If if you think that applying a watermark on your image is going to protect it from being stolen, you're totally wrong. Because basically, there's no watermark on Earth that we cannot remove using Photoshop. There's one exception to that, is if you were to create a watermark that would change the tone in terms of color or brightness of an image uh, on a specific section, that would be um, nearly impossible to uh, to transform, depending on how much you affect the image itself. And also depending on where you position your watermark. If it's in the center of the image, then you can't really crop the image. And it would be quite absurd. 
Uh, and also, if you try to remove it, you may damage the image. But chances are, if that watermark is indeed affecting the image so much, it may actually ruin the image by itself. So you might not actually want to, to steal it. And actually, I probably don't really enjoy looking at it because the watermark would be too visible and, uh, yeah, ruin the image by itself. When it comes to the copyright symbol, that's absolutely absurd as well because each country has its own copyright law. And while I know we hear stories on the news that some people fight for copyrights, and especially in the US, and the reason why in the US is because there's quite a big procedure when it comes to copyright. Uh, you need, um, it's like trademark. You actually need to send your images to the copyright office, get it safe there. And so if there was any problem at any given time, you may actually prove that you had those images at first. Um, that would be one way uh, to do it. But Let's face it, unless you're an extremely famous photographer, if you post something on the web, um, your country laws will apply inside your country. But even if you are based in France, where copyright, you have it, you don't need to do anything, you are born with copyright. In UK, it's the same thing. But let's imagine you post something and you say, hey, you stole my image, I have the copyright, I own it. But if the person who's using your image is based in India or Asia, China or anywhere else, well, you know, good luck to fight them, right? It's, it's, it's just not going to work. So the idea of copywriting with a C, I find it totally absurd. So that's the first thing. Then in terms of watermark, if it's about a signature, the same idea as the artist signing his painting, I quite like this. Um, that's fine because you actually you know, just signing it. It doesn't need to be a big signature. It doesn't need to be a huge watermark. Even some artists are famous for putting little, um, little marks almost hidden inside their art piece. And uh, only the artist himself or herself would actually know about this detail. And when they're famous, it's actually a game to find what is so specific to them. If it's in that set of mind, absolutely go for it. And then finally, there's a third aspect to it, uh, which would be uh, for marketing purposes. And this is what I actually use Watermark for. Uh, so if I bring my, um, my blog again in the article, you know, I publish my photos on the blog in a section for what it depends. I mean, if it's wedding, for example, this is the French version of the site, uh, but we can go to the English version. It doesn't change anything, but... Um, my images will end up being on Google. My images end up being on social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. And I do, as a wedding photographer, I do get people to contact me sometimes because they've seen my pictures on some boards on Pinterest and say, oh, you do weddings and so on. And they find me not because it's just written Tommy got photography, because it would be quite difficult. But no, they have the website right on. And so that's how they contact me. So I always try to find something that is going to be appealing when you look at it. And then I quite like this effect right here. The fact that it's not on the image here because the image is already quite narrow. And on the landscape version of it, I quite like it. It's, it's small and it's, yet it's visible for whoever wants to read it. So this is the reason why I use Watermark. Not because I'm afraid somebody's going to steal it. And whether it's landscape as well, because I, I do publish my uh, landscape photography on, on my website. Uh, and, you know, my images, once again, are being indexed by Google. And if when people, they're not going to steal my images. Um, I do some checks sometimes two times. And over four years, I've actually never seen my images being stolen. Does that mean that I'm a bad photographer? I hope not. Uh, and the number of people buying my own prints uh, like to reassure me that I'm not that bad. Um, so it's just that I make sure that make it difficult for them to to uh, to get my images if they were to download it, and that the quality is not that great to to print it. And if it's just to use as a screensaver, so be it. I'm, if they like my work, that's it. I'm fine with that. So um, this is all I had to say about watermarks. Um, as usual, I love I sick thumbs. Uh, I, I love some. So if you like this video, if you want to show that I didn't do it for nothing, just give me a thumb, that'd be great. And if you watch this video on my blog, um, I hope you enjoy the, um, 
the zip file that it's included there that you can actually uh, test this droplet feature um, easily. If you have any question, whether it's on the blog or on the, the video inside YouTube, please do so. I love uh, answering any question or uh, replying to your comments. I love this. That shows me that you care as much as I do. So until next time, this is Tom Migot saying, if you like it, well, capture it. Cheers.